everybody. It's three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. We are still in lockdown. You guys still aren't back at school. We had a little break last week for half term, but we are now back with the awesome animal lockdown live lessons and I hope you guys are all okay. So today we're doing something super exciting, one of my very favourite subjects and something that has been very highly requested as well and we are going to talk about guinea pigs and we're going to talk about, um, we're basically going to talk today all about the care of guinea pigs and how to be an amazing guinea pig owner and how to look after your guinea pigs really, really well. And um, I started writing this talk and thought, oh, maybe we'll get onto like health and stuff like that. But actually, there was loads to talk about. So we're not going to touch too much on health. But if you've got any particular questions, please don't forget, as always, to pop them in the comments box. And um, if you're adult in charge says it's all right if you want to post a comment to say hello that would be awesome if you want to share your pictures of your guinea pigs with us that would be brilliant as well I'm sure we would all love to see them and I know I certainly do if you like it please don't forget to like and share um, and it will be live it will be saved on here if you haven't um, if you're not able to watch live it'll also be on YouTube and IGTV if you know anyone who hasn't got Facebook so let's get going Hello, Anya, the first commenter. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Right, let's get going. So I am going to now share my screen. Hope I can remember how to do all of this. It feels like ages ago, but it's only been two weeks. Right, so mm -hmm, this one. So if I do that, that, then this, and then this. There we go. So Cat the Vets, how to be great guinea pigs i hope you uh, uh this is me with a picture of a guinea pig because every guinea pig that i see in practice i always take a picture <laughs> uh, and if you notice i actually have guinea pigs on my scrub hat that's how much i love them so but first of all i thought we would chit chat a little bit about the history of guinea pigs like how did they come to be our pets why are they called guinea pigs why are they so cute all of those different things so they have actually been really popular pets for hundreds of years look at this picture this picture was painted in 1615 so 500 years ago and they were our pets even then because if you look really really closely right in the middle of that picture underneath the horse just behind the leopards uh, uh, there they are, two little guinea pigs, and they look just like the pets that we have today. So I think it's just beyond cool that we've had them as pets for so long. And basically what happened is uh, in sort of like Elizabethan times, we got on all those ships and we went exploring all the way around the world. And some people landed in South America, saw these little guinea pigs that had been living in Peru, uh, thought they were amazing and brought them back. And they have always been they have always been pets. They've always been pets for us. The other interesting thing is we don't really know why they're called guinea pigs. So there's a theory that they're called guinea pigs because guinea is an old type of money and they were cost a guinea each to buy. Uh, but actually, uh, they predate the invention of the guinea. So they're even older than that coin, that super old coin. Um, the other theory is, is Guinea is actually a place near in sort of somewhere in South America. My geography is not great. You guys are the ones at school. You could probably tell me where Guinea is. Um, and though they came originally from Peru, they think maybe people sort of got their wires crossed a bit and thought they were from Guinea. Why they're called pigs? Well, pff, nobody really knows. But we think it's just because they're kind of pig like. They snort a bit, don't they? And they squeak a bit. And, you know, they're kind of piggy. And they were brought over from Peru where they were and still are kept for food. So in over there, people actually eat guinea pigs. Um, they're quite a delicacy. They really like it. I'm not going to start eating piggies anytime soon. To me, they're just pets. Um, and they don't actually exist in the wild at all. They are a 100% domesticated species. There are no wild guinea pigs. They are completely domesticated and have been for thousands of years. Like 5000 BC, so before Christ, were was when some of the original sort of history of guinea pigs was noted. So guinea pigs have been around for a long time as our pets. We've loved them all that time. For guinea pigs today, there are around 4,000 guinea pigs in the UK right now. And uh, 400,000, sorry, guinea pigs in the UK right now, uh, which is amazing. So many. And there are 13 different recognised breeds of guinea pigs. I've learned a lot about guinea pigs uh, in the last few days for the, this sort of thing. But most aren't actually a particular breed. There's not actually that many breeds of guinea pigs when you think about it, like given that there's like 250 breeds of dogs and I think probably getting on to somewhere like 80 to 100 breeds of cats. They're just cute. So they come in long haired varieties, they come in short haired varieties, they come in no haired varieties. Uh, but I'm sure you will agree that they are all extremely cute. So how 
do we look after them well? How are we to be, because guinea pigs are so great, we need to be a great owner as well. So let's get started with a home fit for a pig. But before we do, let's see who uh, who's watching. Um, oh, Noah is getting a guinea pig soon. Oh, amazing, Noah. So you're going to be able to pick up some loads of tips for this. Rosalie, uh, welcome. I'm glad your bunny is better. Hi, Ellis, you've got a skinny pig. I know, skinny pigs. Um, oh, somebody's got 30 guinea pigs in their herd and they really, and they recently took in 117. Can you imagine 147 guinea pigs all in one place? I think I'd have died and gone to heaven. Anyway, so they need a lot of space, at least two meters by one meter and at least 30 centimeters high. So if you've got an adult in your life, one of their strides is a meter. So uh, any sort of space they live in should be one stride long and two, one stride wide and two stride longs and at least 30 centimeters. They're not big jumpers, so it doesn't have to be super high to keep them in, uh, but they do need to stay safe, particularly if they're living outside. They need a hut which is draft free in the cold weather so they can snuggle down and stay out of the nasty wind and rain and snow that we've been having and shaded for the warm weather and I think that's sometimes something we often forget about especially about our pets that live outside we're all sort of happy to you know wrap them up warm in the in the in the cold weather but when it gets really hot it's really really important they have somewhere shaded and cool to go because inside a hutch it can be like inside a greenhouse on sunny days um, so that's really important and they're active in the early morning and in the evening so we need to give them access to their run all the time so it's not really terribly appropriate to get a hutch that you shut them in at night night because when you go to bed unless you are well you'll probably go to bed or the adults in your life will after they're they're ready to go to bed but they get up really really early in the morning at dawn and unless you're ready to go and we'll let them out better to make sure that both the run and the hutch are secure so they can get up and run about without you having to wake up and let them out so here is oh here we go so louisa 7.5 square feet as a minimum more for boys that's interesting. Uh, and her guinea pigs live indoors. So yeah, so you can keep the guinea pigs indoors or outdoors. Hello, Emily, uh, with guinea pigs, Ginger and Stripey. Do you know when I was a kid, I think I had guinea pigs and I think they might have, definitely one was called Stripey. We might even have had a guinea, uh, uh, a, a ginger. And Millie is getting a guinea pig. Right, so Millie, yeah, I hope you're taking some notes. So here we have some homes that are fit for a pig. You can keep your guinea pigs indoors or outdoors. We'll chat in a minute about what might be best and what the pros and cons of those are. So we've got a nice hutch there for the outside, reasonable amount of space. That, that little ramp might be a little bit steep, but you can reach in to the sides and clean them out properly. Or you can keep your guinea pigs indoors. But remember, if they're going to be indoors, they still need a lot of space. So look at how much space those guinea pigs have got there. Loads of hay, loads of places to hide. That's important. Take notes. We're going to talk about that later. Um, and lots of room to run around because they're active little creatures. And then I just had to show you this one that I found online. Look at that. I don't think that's a guinea pig cage. I feel like that's a guinea pig enclosure. I feel like that could be a zoo. But these people have fenced off their garden and look at how much space they've got. A fence that keeps them in. There's a piece of like garden art for them to look at. But all look, look at all, look at how many little spaces they've got to hide. And that is really, really important for guinea pigs. They love to be hidden. So Fun fact. Are you ready, fact fans? So our guinea pigs are most active at dawn and at dusk. And the reason for that is they're prey animals. So if they're out and about in the middle of the day, that's maybe when they're going to be most vulnerable to being picked off by a predator like a fox or something. I'm entirely sure what they have in Peru as predators. Bears, maybe. Uh, anyway, the term for them is crepuscular. Say it with me. Crepuscular. I love a good word. And that, I think, is an excellent word. So your guinea pig is crepuscular. So they also need loads of places to hide. So because they're prey animals and they have no defense, they can't run very fast. They can't jump. They can't bite. They basically, their only defense to not be eaten by predators is to hide. And so it's really important that we give them loads of places to hide because even though obviously in our homes, there's going to be no, oh, they've probably got eagles in Peru, haven't they? There's going to be no eagles swooping down and plucking them out of the garden or out of your living room and no fox, hopefully certainly inside is going to come and get them. But they don't know that so they, it's completely ingrained for them that they are prey animals and they need to stay safe and hidden so there's loads of ways to help them stay hidden you can get these amazing little um wooden sort of hidey holes like that that you can scatter about their run uh, tubes cardboard tubes plastic tubes there's even like soft blankety tubes tubes are great because if you've got lots of guinea pigs or more than one 
they sometimes can bully each other a bit or get on each other's nerves. And if somewhere to hide has got a way in, but a different way out, that's really helpful because if one pig gets in there and then the other pig gets in, there's no going to be any argy bargy. One of them just walks out and goes to the next tidy hole. Or these, these are so cute. You can get, it doesn't have to be wooden or cardboard or like outdoorsy. You can get some, um, like little soft little hidey holes like you can get for cats but also you don't have to spend loads of money I mean I don't know about you but you know there's quite a few Amazon and delivery boxes in my house at the moment just cut a hole and plonk it in I used to love doing this when I had guinea pigs when I was younger you cut a hole in a box the guinea pig runs straight in it and says thank you so we don't have to spend loads of money to make our piggies happy but they do love to be hidden and I thought I would share this with you so this is at my local uh, petting zoo this is the guinea pig enclosure and I was like, oh, where are all the pigs? So they've got all these places to hide. But if you look very, very carefully, it's just coming back in to shot there. If you look right at the bottom, you can see a fat little guinea pig bottom hiding in that huge pile of hay. And that's what they love to do. If you give them a big pile of hay, they'll run straight in the middle and sit there. Look at that fur. Can you see that furry cream bottom in the bottom of that picture just right at the beginning? They'll run straight into a big pile of hay. I think there might have been 10 little pigs in there. And I stood a little bit longer and some of them did come out. Um, but they just love to be hidden, you know, even if all the birdies do eat their food instead. So let's see who else is watching. Uh, oh, here we go. So Louise says, boys can squabble more. So if they have extra space, if they fight, the bond has been broken and they will need to be separated. So there you go. Boys squabble and fight. I mean, one doesn't like to draw any gender stereotypes, but that doesn't surprise me. Um, so, yeah, so we need lots of space for our piggies because if they've got space to get away from each other and live their own lives, they're going to then come back and be much friendlier. Imagine if you've got brothers and sisters, if you were stuck in a living room with them all the time, and you couldn't get away and just annoyed each other all day. Although life at the moment does feel not too dissimilar from that, let's be honest. Right, so should your guinea pig live indoors or outdoors? So this is a big question because guinea pigs really are traditionally an outdoor pet. People would have a hutch and a run in the garden, but recently as they've become more popular and people love them more, they want them in the house. And they are such amazing animals to have in the house. They squeak and they talk to you and you get up in the morning and they come to the front of the cage and, and say hello and are after treats and snacks. So it's great because when they're indoors, you can interact with them more. They're always there. You're always there. So you can play with them and talk to them. You can keep an eye on them. You know, if you were here at the rabbit talk, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about how prey animals not only are very sort of nervous and like to hide, but they also are really good at hiding when they're feeling poorly. And if you're watching them all day, every day, you're maybe going to pick up on a bit quicker if they are struggling with any problems. But indoors our houses are generally smaller than our gardens and um, so they're going to have less space so you have to give up quite a large amount of your living room to make it worthwhile and that kind of thing or your bedroom this is a great another great example of an indoor guinea pig space but look how big it is um and is it more stressful so here's the interesting thing um Guinea pigs inside are probably chronically more stressed than guinea pigs who live outside. Chronically means low grade all the time, always a little bit stressed. So I'm going to share some science with you now. So concentrate. We have a gland in our bodies called the adrenal gland, and that produces the hormone adrenaline, which is released when we are stressed or frightened or scared. And for a long, long time, vets used to think that guinea pigs just naturally had really big adrenal glands. They just had big adrenal glands. They're a prey animal. They're always a bit stressed. That kind of makes sense. But then they compared the size of adrenal glands from indoor piggies to outdoor piggies and discovered that the piggies that lived outdoors had much, much smaller adrenal glands. And so the working theory, because science moves on and we're not entirely sure, is that guinea pigs who live indoors are probably just a chronically stressed all the time because you know, you, we're always there, we're always looming over them, we're always looking at them, there's always somebody there, maybe they don't have as much space, maybe they don't have as many places to hide, and actually, they're not quite enjoying life as much as the piggies who are outdoors, who are being left alone a lot more of the time. That doesn't mean you can't keep your pigs indoors, it does mean, though, that we have to work harder for our indoor pigs to make sure that they have a good and stress-free life. So if they're outdoors, it is harder to spend time with them on a lovely day like this you can get in their cage and you can sit and you can play with them but obviously majority of our lives are indoors especially in weather like this so it's harder to spend time with them and they're a pet that's amazing and of course we want to spend time with them because they're fabulous and we love them it's less easy to spot problems because we're spending less time 
but they have more space or there is the potential certainly for them to have more space. And like I say, there is this theory that actually guinea pigs who live outdoors are less stressed than the ones who live indoors. So I think it's just something that we need to bear in mind. If we're going to look after them, if we're going to look after them at all, we need to look after them well. But I think the one thing that we can definitely, definitely all agree on is a bad enclosure inside or outside will be a miserable, stressful life. So think about some of the enclosures we've just seen, how much space they've got, how many things they've got in them, toys, hidey holes, food, loads of things, compare them to this, which is kind of your traditional outdoor guinea pig cage or rabbit cage that would have been used years ago. And unfortunately, there are still some of them around. You know, that's a tiny space. That's a miserable existence. And then this one, these are indoor cages. So these are quite commonly used, you know, in bedrooms or popped in a corner of the kitchen or kept under the kitchen table, you know, but they're not really that big. You know, look how small it is. So really, more than anything, wherever we keep our guinea pigs, we need to make sure that where they live is absolutely awesome and just perfect for them. So, the great guinea pig menu. What should we feed our guinea pigs to keep them in the most brilliant health possible? But before we start, let's have a little look who else is watching. Oh, so someone has done some research. Thank you ever so much, Rosalie. So the predators in Peru, <laughs> uh, coyotes, snakes, owls, and wolves. So quite a few, all of those things are busy thinking that guinea pigs make a good lunch. So you can see why guinea pigs do not wish to be lunch um, and wish to hide. Uh, and oh, Colin and Sirius, Emily, you've got two. Uh, oh, and somebody says boars make better pets because they're generally more sociable and cuddly. Sows are more aloof and active. All pigs can squabble. However, it's more common with boys and they should always live in pairs. I completely agree with you. A little herd with sows, uh sows will herd and boy boars are best in pairs so i mean the this this is the thing they are guinea pigs but we use all those same terms so you know actual pigs the girls are called sows and the boys are called boars and they live in a herd and guinea pigs we call the girls sows and we call the boys boars so it's difficult to know which came first the guinea pigs names or you know do we name them after that because they're like pigs or were they called that already so we call them but i don't know I don't know, it's lost in the midst of time, hundreds and hundreds of years. So a guinea pig's diet. If you watched, again, if you watched the rabbit talk a few weeks back, we talked about diet and how important it is. And it's just the same for our piggies. A guinea pig's diet should be mostly hay and grass. So every day, a guinea pig should eat a pile of hay as big as they are, basically. It's so important. It's important for their teeth. They have these weird old teeth that grow continually. And so they need to be ground down by rough, woody stuff like hay and grass. If they don't eat enough hay and grass, those teeth can grow out of control and that can cause an awful lot of very, very painful problems. So we need to do that. And it's also really important for their tummies as well. Their little tummies need loads of fiber to keep going to make lovely healthy poos and to keep them healthy. So 80 to 90% of everything we feed our piggies should be hay. The best hay to get is the stuff in the small kind of vacuum packed bags that you can pick up at pet shops and that kind of thing. The stuff we feed to horses isn't bad, but it's not that brilliant. It's, you know, it's hay for big things. Big pile, big bales of hay are for big animals. Little bales of hay are for little animals. That's the way to remember it. But they also need pellets and fresh food. So uh, they need guinea pig pellets, not rabbit pellets. And that's important. We're going to come to that later. So do not give them rabbit food or muesli diet. So no food that looks like muesli, all little bits. All that happens is your pig goes, oh, I like the rolled oats and eats those and the peas and leaves all the rest. And it means they can be quite nutritionally imbalanced. So they're not getting enough things like vitamin C or calcium or all the things that they need. Whereas in the pellets, they can't pick out their favorite bits they have to eat everything and that keeps them healthier. Okay, so no pellets, no, no muesli, <laughs> pellets, but guinea pig pellets, not rabbit pellets. And a fan full of fresh vegetables and plants every day. Um, not very many, and you can look, I thought about writing this down, but it turned out to be in a massive list, so I just thought you guys can look online. You can actually pick loads of amazing stuff just straight out of your garden. You know, I'm not a massive fan of gardening, so I don't mind a few dandelions popping up on my lawn, and the dandelion leaves and are perfect for piggies. So there you go, that's your excuse for not mowing the lawn too often. So here's another fun fact, fact fans. Love a fact. Guinea pig pellets and fresh vegetables are really important for guinea pigs because 
guinea pigs cannot make vitamin C. So obviously you've heard of vitamins. There's loads of vitamins A and K and E and all the rest of them. But there is one vitamin called vitamin C. And that's, uh, we find it particularly in things like oranges and kiwi fruits and green leafy vegetables all of those things that we know we should eat, but sometimes we don't eat enough of them. Um, and guinea pigs can't make it. So we have to make sure that guinea pigs eat vitamin C in their diet. And that's one of the reasons why it's really important that we give them guinea pig pellets, not rabbit pellets, because rabbit pellet, rabbits can make their own vitamin C. So they don't need their food to be supplemented, although there is some in it. So we want our guinea pigs to eat guinea pig food, um, and actually, really, we shouldn't ever keep rabbits and guinea pigs together. They don't make good pals. Rabbits like to live with rabbits and guinea pigs like to live with guinea pigs. And though sometimes the two are kept together, it's actually not the best idea. So quiz. You know, I like to ask you guys questions and I'm interested in your answers. And also it gives me a chance to like go on the Internet and find amazing cute gifts like this one. So everyone's a winner. Here's a question. Which other mammal cannot manufacture vitamin C in their bodies. Which one? Have a little think, tell me in the comments. I will read what you're saying and we will see. So back to the great guinea pig menu. Water. This is really, really important. So most people give their guinea pigs water from the feeder bottles, which are really common and dead convenient. And you can hang them up on the side of the cage or the side of the run and the guinea pigs come along and out of it but actually it is more it's much better just like with the rabbits if you were listening to that one that they drink from bowls they find it a lot easier it's easier on their teeth they tend to drink more so they're not so dehydrated you guys if you're at school you know you'll have had your water bottles in school and the teachers will talk to you about how important it is to drink lots of water and stay hydrated and it's exactly the same for our guinea pigs so if you can ditch the water bottle or keep the water bottle but also give them a water bowl as well Right, so here is the answer to the question. The answer for which other mammal can't produce vitamin C is you. You can't produce it either. We can't produce it, humans can't produce it. Um, so we need to eat your, our fresh veg as well. So that's why when your mum says you need to eat your veg and have you had a piece of fruit today, she is actually right because it's really, really important that we have enough vitamin C. It keeps us super healthy and well. And we are just like guinea pigs. So I thought you might like fact fans to find out a bit more about vitamin C. So here's some tips for our vitamin C and our, on our guinea pigs. So though it is rich in fresh vegetables, green leafy veg stuff out of the garden, somebody said here bell peppers. So yeah, absolutely. Anything like that, it does drop quite quickly. So just make sure that what you're feeding is lovely and fresh. Pluck it out of the garden and feed it to your piggy. Uh, but pellets, keep those pellets in an airtight container because if uh, they the vitamin C can drop in them as well, even though it's enriched. So take your guinea pig pellets, keep them in the box, uh, keep them in the bag and put the bag in a box or tip them out and put them in an airtight container. Um, they don't need very many. You know, remember that the pellets, we want to be 80 to 90 percent of that diet needs to be hay. So that means that like five to 10 percent is pellets at the very, very most. So you're not going to get through those pellets very quickly. And if we get to the end of the bag and maybe it's not been airtight, the vitamin C levels can drop and that can make our piggies quite poorly. So keep it in an airtight container and being so similar to humans is one of the reasons why guinea pigs used to be uh, or are used still in lots of medical research and that's why we say being a guinea pig for trialing something I don't know if you've ever heard of that phrase but it's quite a common phrase to be a guinea pig for something to be the first one to try something or to try something out on and that's where we get it from it's our little piggy friend so here's the other thing that your piggy needs to eat they need to eat their poo yes Guinea pigs eat their poo. We love them anyway, still. So not those little hard ones that literally get everywhere and they sort of shed them as they go and they're everywhere. Those <laughs> Guinea pigs produce such a lot of poo for something so small. Um, they actually produce a soft kind of poo called a cecotroph um, that they generally pass them at night and then they should eat them straight away. So they come out uh, and as they come out, they tickle their bottom tickles them a bit, they reach around and they eat them again. And that's just part of their digestive system. It's really, really important for them to be able to extract all the nutrition out of their food and to stay really healthy. So they also need to eat their poo. And if you pick your piggy up and handle them and find that there's lots of poo stuck to the bottom, it's probably this soft poo called cecotrophs. It's probably not diarrhea. They can get diarrhea, but not very often. And we need to ask why. And if they're not eating them, it might be that they're simply too fat and their tummy's in the way and they literally cannot reach around their enormous tummies and it's 
time for your piggy to go on a diet. Or if they're older and a bit stiff and a bit arthritic, they might not eat them. Or if we give them too much food. So another reason why we have to keep the pellets and the fresh vegetables, they need them, but not too many because we need them to eat their secretrophs as well. And uh, so if you find your piggies are getting a bit dirty around the bottom, we need to stand back and figure out why that is and how we can get them eating them. And more fun facts and more cute gifts because the two go together and I can't resist the technical term for eating your own poo. I don't suggest that you try it, but if you ever do, this is what you're doing is coprophagia. So another great word. So today we've learned crepuscular and coprophagia. So next time you go to the vet, you can say I've brought my coprophagic crepuscular creature to see you and they will have to guess what kind of animal you've brought they should know the answer and then finally let's just go through who's watching oh so patricia's got a 10 an 8 by 10 shed for four with a mezzanine for their bedrooms i love that they've got sleep on the mezzanine floor um, and sandpaper on the stairs to keep their to keep their nails down. That's a really good thing. I often get asked how to trim guinea pigs nails and I didn't put the video in, which I did think I should have done, but uh, on my Facebook page and also on my TikTok, you'll see a little video on how to trim guinea pigs nails if you wanna go and find that, if you're wondering that question. Uh, yes, Patricia, they have your, so Patricia's guinea pigs have a bowl for their water, but they make a mess. They do, that's the hard thing is if you've got a bowl of water, it is kind of a bit messier and it does get wetter, but it is better if you can cope with that. Right, so guinea pigs are super social and they need friends. You think about all the chittering and chattering they do and all the jumping about and everything they do. It's really, really important that we never keep guinea pigs on their own. So the minimum is two, but you can have a whole herd. Uh, like we've already been told, uh, sows, are better together and boys are better in pairs. Of course, if you decide to mix them, if you get a girl and a boy, or if you get a herd of girls and you decide to put a boy in there with them, you are going to have them neutered because guinea pigs, baby guinea pigs, are adorable. <laughs> but you don't want to unexpectedly get up one morning and discover that you've suddenly gone from two guinea pigs to something like 10. And just to finish off, I wanted to just treat you with a couple of videos of some guinea pig patients that I had recently. Listen to them, please. Oh, that noise is one of my favorites. Sorry about the camera work. It might make you feel a bit sick. But these are baby guinea pigs, and this is what happened. Two guinea pigs, allegedly both the same sex. But unfortunately, they turned out that they weren't. <laughs> and oh, let's see if I can make that play again. There we go. Uh, and suddenly, three little babies appeared one day, and they came to me for a checkup. And honestly, it was the best day. Look how cute they are, because little guinea pigs come out perfect they don't come out pink and like weird little slugs like rabbits do they don't come out unable to walk or see like cats and dogs they literally come out like perfect little tiny adult guinea pigs and they are amazing and super cute but if you're gonna have them you don't want to get them unexpectedly Right. So there we are. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Today, we just talked about how to be great at guinea pigs, how to look after your guinea pigs really well. If you're thinking about get guinea pigs, I hope you found this helpful. If you've got guinea pigs, I hope you've been able to feel smug and know that you've ticked a load of these boxes here today. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and come back to you. Dee -dee -dee. Stop screen. There I am. Hi. So hi, everybody. Oh, Brendan and your children, Caitlin and Eleanor, you got the question right. You knew it was humans. Um, uh, Toby, you knew as well that it was humans that uh, did the vitamin C thing. Um, and Amina, you've got two guinea pigs, Mordy and Poppy. That's amazing. I just, I'm so jealous of you all. But there are guinea pigs in my future. We've decided we're going to get some and we're currently building a run for them as we speak. Um, and then Amy has made the very good suggestion that rescues can help up match lonely pigs and lonely hearts for pigs. But yes, if you've got a piggy and you want to get another or you're worried that your piggy is lonely, then absolutely ring up your local rescue centre, ring up the local RSPCA, ring up people like that. They will be able to match, do a love matchmaking job on your piggies and make sure that they don't uh, live um, live on their own. Oh, look, loads of people got that question right. Uh, wonderful. So 
thanks ever so much everybody for joining me um i'm pleased to be back next week is going to be the last one because of course after next week you guys are all going to be back at school again and i thought what we would do next week unless anyone has got any other suggestions is we're going to do how to talk to the animals we're going to learn all about body language uh, particularly in our cats and dogs and how to understand how they're feeling how to understand what they're saying to us and how that mean and how to act around them so we know we we can understand them and they can understand us and it keeps everybody safe and well and happy so thanks so much for tuning in everybody great to see you all again um please don't forget to share it and tell your friends and i will see you next week <laughs>